So in this video, we'll just take a closer look at this Asus TUF 3090. And the reason for getting this in late 2022 is actually the pricing. I got this on sale around 50-ish percent off compared to its MSRP. Of course, the 4090 is out now or kind of is out, kind of hard to get. Try to get one of those, but yeah, they're just sold out so quickly. And you can only really get those lower tier cards like Zotac or Gainward or PNY. They're like sometimes in stock, but the better ones from Asus and Gigabyte and MSI just sell out within a flash of an eye here in my country. And the 4090 is actually also quite a lot more expensive compared to like when the 3090 came out because of the price increase here in Europe where I live. So it cost around $500 more than what you get it for in the, the US. And now the 3090 have been out for so long, they're starting to sell them out. So I got this one on sale, like I said, around 50% off. This is going to replace my 3080 in my main gaming PC. And I wanted to upgrade that with the 3090 just to get some more video memory because I don't really game that much anymore. And I want to convert that into an editing station because I have 64 gigabytes of memory and the Ryzen 9 3950X in that machine. So instead of having one machine for editing and one machine for gaming, I kind of just want to convert those two machines into one. And my main concern is just video memory have not really been an issue for me with the 3080 I have in my editing PC as well. I have the tough 3080 in that one. The 10 gigabyte of video memory has not really been an issue, but it is definitely the biggest concern I have with that build at some point, maybe I will grow out of that. And also if I want to do more extensive video edits, I definitely would like to have some more video memory so I won't run out of that uh, doing my render or my edits. I did get some video errors with the 8 gigabytes 2080 Super I had before, but like I said, after getting the 3080 10 gigabyte, I have really not had any issues. And I used the Vinci Resolve for all of my video editing. And the Tough actually seemed to be one of the better ones because the 3090 does have a pretty big design flaw, you sort of speak, because it uses one gigabyte of RAM. That means it has 24 DIMMs in total on the card. 12 of those are backside of the card, so it's towards the back plate of the card. And those tend to get very hard, hot on certain cards, including this one as well. So of course, if you're mining or anything that extensively are pushing those RAM non-stop 24 seven, those will kind of overheat pretty easily. But I believe the Tough is actually one of the better ones and actually probably a little bit better in terms of a memory temperature co uh, compared to like the Strix models as well. So at least that's what I hope so. So because even in my uh, ROG Strix and my 3080 Tough, the memory does get kind of hot just gaming, getting around the 80 degrees and those have uh, the memories on the front side and doesn't even run as fast as on this one here. So yeah, that's definitely one of my main concerns and one of the things I'm going to test out. But anyways, we always get Asus card in this boring brown box here. So let's just get the inner box out of this one here and have a closer look at that one. I don't suspect there's any differences compared to like when it was released. And now, what is it, two years later in terms of like packaging and construction and so on. I I hope they have ironed out any kind of issues they uh, must have figured out during manufacturing of, of these cards here, because they have been manufacturing them for a few years. So if there's any issues, they must have ironed them out by now. I hope so. And I hope it will be stable and run relatively cool and quiet. So inside, of course, we do have the proper retail box. Let me just get that one out. And this is probably what you will see when you buy it inside a store or something like that. I did order mine online, but I did pick it up because they offer like pickup service for the place where I ordered mine. Graphics there definitely looks a lot darker than I remember on my 3080 tough cards. I have two of those. I have the original one, generation one, but didn't have the LHR limiting factor or limiter built in. And then I also have an LHR version, so version two. And I believe this one does look a lot blacker here to the texture or the graphics on the box. So looks kind of nice. Of course, tough gaming graphics card, RTX 3090 and those 24 gigabyte of video memory. The only way to get 24 gigabyte of memory is by the 4090 at that cost twice as much as this one here. Also significantly faster, but does also require up to 100 watts more. So it does need a little more power to actually get those impressive speeds, but definitely a much more efficient card as well. The 4090 compared to the, the 3090 here, not the most efficient card, but I believe the 350 watt that this card is rated at 
it's definitely sufficient for my use case. Um, right at the bed there, you can see there's a little bit of a tear in the box actually. A little bit disappointed there. It's brand new. But anyways, let's have a look around the box. A little branding here on the top. Top and the Tough Gaming. And some more Tough branding here. Graphics card, OC version as well. You can also get this as a non-OC version, but the OC was the only one they had. You pay a little extra for that, but not really a big improvement in terms of speed. And of course, that nice 24 gigabyte of memory. And you can kind of see the model number there. So it is the Tough 3090 O24G Gaming. So used for gaming and also will be used for content creation. Probably mostly content creation, really. More branding there on the other side and on the back side here is where we have all of the details about the product. I believe Asus is the only company that actually has two HDMI ports on the 30 series of cards, which is kind of nice. Don't really use HDMI as much, but definitely nice that you can have two HDMI devices connected without, of course, using an adapter from the display ports and have very, very good cooling, at least the 3080 cards. Very good cooling, I believe, actually in idle. It's a little bit better than my 3080 uh, ROG Strix card I have. Even though the 3080 cooler seem to be a little bit bigger and more massive, it just have a tendency to spin up the fans from time to time when it's just idling or just, you know, in Windows and so on. My other two tough cards doesn't really do that. So my ROG Strix definitely had a tendency to get a little hotter just idling in my desktop. But very impressive cooler and also have dedicated memory cooler or heatsink there on the memory modules as well as, of course, a lot of heat pipes and a big fin array there and three big fans and those fans are relatively quiet on my other tough cards as well and of course you have all those memory models on the back so i hope that it will have sufficient passive cooling on there and also have some front intake fan in my case of course pushing a little bit of air through the graphics card there so hope it will be good enough other than that really let's just get into this one here and have a closer look and I'm not 100% sure I'm going to keep this one. I just wanted to try it out first. I like the temperature thermals and, of course, the noise floor of this card here and its performance. I will keep it. It's a pretty good deal. And nothing else in the box there. And inside we have another box. <laughs> Asus In Search of Incredible. And just a black, black box all the way around here. And on the back side, we have a little bit of text here. I'm not really sure what that is. It means cardboard, something. And let's just get a little bit closer, actually. So let's open it up. See what we get inside the box. I believe it's the exact same retail box as you get with the release day model. So nothing really surprising there. And there's not a, not a V2 or V1 of the 3090 to, um, to my experience or to my knowledge so there's no LHR version of the 3090 and then of course we have the card itself here nice and heavy card and one thing I really like about the 30 series even though they are bigger than the 20 series is that they are not as big as the 40 series those are just ju such a uh, humongous cards I suppose they have super superior cooling but man I think the 30 series is big enough for my likings Let's just throw the card over there for now and dig a little deeper and see what else we get in the box. So, of course, there is an application you can download if you want to overclock further. And there is a little bit of information here, how to install and mount the card. I don't believe there's any anti-sag brackets included with this one here, because the Tough series have a tendency to sag a little bit, at least in my experience. But yeah, pretty easy to install it. Just plug it in, plug in the power supply, and of course use a dedicated cable or plug for each plug on the card. And other than that, you get this tough gaming card. So it gets three out of five, I believe, for overclocking and three out of five for heat dissipation. So a three-star card, great. Warranty card as well. Another great thing about Asus, if you go and register a device online, create an account if you don't already have one, and you could get an extra year of warranty directly from Asus. So I'll definitely recommend going to do that. And the capacitors is Miltec standard. <laughs> what? Mil tested? <laughs> okay, and the chokes are also mil tested. So you can pretty much take this card to, to war or what? They're very durable, I believe. VRM and so on. And thank you for purchasing an Asus graphics card. Well, you are so very welcome. Let's just get rid of this box here and have a closer look at the card itself. 
So I believe it's completely identical to the 3080 Tough series, at least in terms of size. Of course, it does have a little bit better die in there because this has a 3090, so it's a little bit higher spec, a better bin, I suppose, compared to the 3080. But other than that, I believe it's exactly the same cooler and everything else on there. Of course, you do have the NV link on the Tough. You don't have that. Oh, excuse me, on the 3090. You don't have that on the 3080. And you also have two 8-pin connectors, which is kind of nice. I actually have three 8-pin connectors in my current 3080 to Rock Strix I have in that machine. I'm going to replace with this one here. So this one is rated at 350 watts. I believe my Rock Strix is rated at up to 400 watts, or is it 380 watts or something like that? Because it is, of course, overclocked as well. This one is, has also a slight overclock, but still doesn't really require as much power. So I hope it will be a little more efficient, actually, than my 3080 that is going to replace, or potentially will uh, replace. Other than that, we have this all metal throughout. A little bit of rattle there, but it is all metal, so it's very well constructed. Big axial fans. Very good fans on here, do a decent job of cooling, and also because there is a lot of air that can escape from this design here, compared to the 3080 I have, with this like very bulky frame all the way around, actually not as much air can escape through there, so it's a little bit better designed this one here, because it's actually easier for the air to escape uh, through this heatsink here. And of course this one, like all the other Asus cars, have the smaller capacitors or whatever it is back there. That was a very important thing back when they were brand new because some cars just crashed because there were some issues with the driver boosting too high. Uh, and yeah, all Asus cars have these smaller ones on the backside, not completely straight, I can see. Uh, it's a little OCD, but should be fine enough. And else there is some protective plastic on the back side here that I'm going to remove when I'm installing the card. We have the two different modes here. So we have the performance mode and the quiet mode. I believe the only difference is the fan profile, so it will run a little hotter in quiet mode, a little cooler in performance mode. And of course, if it, the card runs a little cooler, it will probably boost a little higher, so it will also lose a few frames. Go into quiet mode, I'm just going to leave it performance mode. I did run uh, my other 3080 I have in quiet mode to begin with, but I didn't really notice any big difference between the two. Only really when gaming, was a little louder, but yeah, very cool and efficient fan. Or heatsink on this one, so it's definitely not a issue at all with noise either of those two profiles but of course if you want to have a very quiet build you can go for the quiet mode there and like i said this one also has the nv link so you can mount two of these together i'm not going to do that because that will just generate so much heat and these cars just get so hot to begin with because like i said all of those memory models there on the back or modules here on the back just producing a lot of heat so i'm very curious to try that one out in my build of course it will very depending on what kind of case and airflow and fans and so on you have your case and your ambient temperature but i hope it will not get too hot or much hotter than my other 3080 cards and i'm not gonna mine with this one here or render non-stop i'm just gonna of course do my casual casual video editing and the casual game or gaming from now and again and of course we have that flow through design here and a relatively thick backplate as well and it's all made of aluminium as well. It's kind of nice. We have some anti-sac screws there. I've never seen any anti-sac mounts for this specific system here. I don't know if that's even a thing. Let me know down in the comments if you know where I can buy one of these anti-sac brackets. And you can probably see maybe better from the top there the VRM and the, the power manager design here. It's supposed to be very good. I don't have any clue when it comes to stuff like that. But definitely listening to other people going through this board seems to be one of the better ones out there. And on the front here, we have that stainless steel, very durable bracket here. And of course, those two HDMI and three display ports and a little bit of air ventilation as well. But this card, in my experience, just have a little bit tendency to sag. Unfortunately, not bad, but just a little bit. So if you're very sensitive to sag, definitely get an anti-sag bracket for this one here because there is no real mount going through the entire board of the of the graphics card like other graphics card from asus like the strix series and the other manufacturers kind of have a little bracket that goes like an l bracket over the board here and to the front mount but this one only have a very small one there i don't know if you can barely see it actually a little l bracket there and that doesn't really hold the card all that well in place it does a pretty good job but 
definitely had a tendency to check a little bit in my experience. We do also have a little bit of RGB, but only really here in the top logo. So very subtle, and there's a little bit of a light strip here as well. Very subtle LG, uh, RGB, makes it like a little more towards like professional cards. But I wish that the, on all cards would just be an on and off switch for RGB lighting. So you can just turn it off completely. Don't have to rely on software if you want to turn it off. That's a little bit annoying. At least it is minimal and this is going in a build without a windowed a side panel. So it's just a steel side panel with some anti noise dampening material, so I'm not going to see this card inside the build. That's why I am not really care about uh, RGB. So from what I can see, it's actually the small wire there going into the side. And actually you can just pull that one if you didn't want have, uh, to have RGB on the card. Uh, we'll consider doing that actually because it is a little bit wasteful. But else, that's pretty much it when it comes to the card itself. Let me just install it into my build here and see actually if we get some faster frames per second in just the gaming benchmarks and see if there's any uplift there and also test it with DaVinci Resolve. I have a very simple video edit just going through my timeline and I'll also see if I can export a little bit faster with the same project I've tested on my 3080 with this one here and test some thermals and see if it actually is getting too hot in terms of the memory inside my case. So this is my current card in this computer. So the ROG Strix 3080. I think it's a very beautiful card, so I uh, kind of am um, debating with myself whether I should install this in my Evolve X that does have a windowed side panel, so I can take full advantage of the, the RGB, which is of course turned off right now because the computer is completely turned off. But considering this is a more of a workstation computer, I have a steel side with anti-noise dampening material, so I can really take a complete uh, advantage of that uh, relatively beautiful card in my experience, or in my opinion at least. I think this card looks uh, excellent. One of the better looking cards out there. So yeah, this is before. Let me just install the Tough 3080. So the 4090 is now installed. I did actually go and remove that RGB cable or plug. I don't know if you can actually see it in there. So the RGB will be completely disabled in this card here. And I've also put a little bit of, oh, you can see there, a little bit of plastic protector in between the graphics card and the case just to make it not sag and now it's actually pretty stable in there else it will be sagging just a little bit but this is a very easy solution just to put something in between there and the case you can see that little plastic or that transparent rubber stopper that i have in there that's a very cheap solution and I'll probably just stick with that for, for now. So easy install. I think it looks pretty nice inside this case. I kind of like this graphics card. Looks pretty nice, very nicely built. Only really have that sagging issue, but that's an easy and cheap fix. And of course you can make it more elegant just by getting an anti-sag bracket. That's it for this video here. It's just a first look and unboxing of the Tough 3090 OC here in late 2022, where you can actually get these at a relatively good price. Still a little bit expensive, but like I said, in my country, the 4090 just gotten so much more expensive. And this one is actually 50% below MSRP. So best value card you can get if you want something with 24 gigabyte of memory and actually not that much more expensive than the 3080. 12 gigabyte here in, in my country at least and it was less expensive than a 3080 Ti so get that extra video memory kind of nice but that's pretty much it for this one I hope to see you again in a future one until then take care